This recording will go over your week three homework and also uh, provide a little information about exam one. So first we'll take a look at the stimulants and depressants Kahoot quiz you all did. Uh, it looks like the first one that you guys had problems with was just knowing what the term analeptic meant. So the primary use of an analeptic is to stimulate respiration and that's just a definition that you need to memorize right and then you need to go the step further memorize the drugs that were highlighted as analeptic do you as analeptics do you remember what those were those were caffeine theophylline and doxepram all right so the next one you guys have problems with a benzodiazepine overdose is treated with your options were narcan or flumazenil and narcan the generic name for that is naloxone i should probably change that to have the generic name but most people know that Narcan is used to treat overdoses, but what is important that we understand is the antidote for overdoses or toxicity depends on what the offending medication is. So while an opioid overdose could be treated with naloxone, also known as Narcan, the benzodiazepine overdose is treated with flumazenil. This one surprised me a little bit. Zopidem uh, zopidem tartrate, do I take it with breakfast or at bedtime? Correct answer is at bedtime. Zopidem tartrate, the brand name is Ambien, okay? Uh, we test with generic names, but maybe that'll trigger something for one of you guys that got it wrong. But it is a non-benzo sedative hypnotic. So if I'm taking this medication, Ambien, zopidem tartrate, to help with sleep, it makes sense that I'm going to take it at bedtime. And finally, a question about positioning a patient after post-spinal anesthesia. Uh, encouraging the patient to remain flat following surgery with spinal anesthesia and to take increased fluids usually decreases the likelihood of leaking spinal fluid. And it's that leakage of the spinal fluid that can actually cause the spinal headache or the post-dural puncture headache that can result from spinal anesthesia. And I'm providing you with the answers for the chapter 19 homework. Go ahead and pause the video and compare the provided answers with what you had put down um, and reach out to me if you have any questions about any of these. Overall, you guys did really good on the practice quiz. Um, we'll go over some of the more frequently missed questions. So the question about protein-bound drugs. So it was a true or false. Are protein-bound drugs able to reach their site of action, causing a pharmacologic response? And the correct answer to that is false. Remember, free drugs is, are the drugs that cause a response in the body system. If a drug is bound to protein, it can't do its job until it becomes a free drug. And understanding that uh, lets us know why if we take two medications, two different medications that are both highly protein bound, why it can cause problems, right? Because there's only so many proteins. So a medication will end up having a greater concentration of free medication than we normally expect, which can lead to accumulation and toxicity. So in terms of the lab values, that homework assignment that you did at the beginning of the course, you have to remember not only the numbers, what is the normal range for these lab values, but also what is it telling us? What organ function is it representing? So the nurse is reviewing labs to determine liver function. What labs do I want to monitor? That would be the ALT and AST. And then you want to go a step further and also know the normal ranges for those. So the serum creatinine and BUN, that would be monitoring what function? Hopefully you're thinking kidney. So with atropine, this is how I write atropine to help me remember something goes up and something goes down. Um, so you have to remember which is which. So what goes down or what decreases is salvation and secretions. And that's why it's frequently given pre-op to decrease those secretions. 
So in terms of heart rate, what does atropine do? It actually increases the heart rate. So atropine can be given to treat symptomatic bradycardia or symptomatic low heart rate. So atropine increases heart rate, decreases secretion salvation. Then again, with atropine, you have to know the classification. So what's the classification of atropine? It's an anticholinergic. Um, and so then you know the properties of anticholinergic. So beyond knowing that it increases heart rate and decreases salvation, you know you've studied the classifications of anticholinergics and you understand that classification in general. So when you're taking a test or when you're passing a medication, you know what to be looking for in your patient. Normal range of BUN is 10 to 20. Again, this is a lab value that we look at to determine kidney functions, if our kidneys are functioning well. So these lab values that you were presented in that first homework assignment, you need to know for all of pharmacology, for all of your the rest of your nursing courses, and for your career as a nurse. So you need to get those uh, lab values memorized. And finally, we'll look at is it a sympathetic or a parasympathetic response. So mydriasis, you should recognize as dilation of the pupil, and that is a sympathetic fight or flight. And the example I gave in lecture is that I wake up in the middle of the night, I hear a loud noise, and my pupils dilate to try to let in as, as much light as possible. I'm waking up startled. Meiosis, which would be pupil constriction, would be a parasympathetic response. And looking at these questions, it looked like more students got correct that constriction of pupils occurs with parasympath parasympathetic response. And with the meiosis question, uh, not as many students got that correct. So again, recognize those medical terms. Might You know that constriction of pupils is a parasympathetic response. You need to recognize meiosis for what it is, which is pupil constriction. You need to associate constriction of blood vessels with an increase of blood pressure, right? And we know that increase of blood pressure is something I'm going to see with fight or flight. It is a sympathetic response. And lastly, constriction of the bladder muscle. So you need to know that constriction of the bladder muscle leads to urination. We know that we don't take bathroom breaks during fight or flight when the, when the sympathetic nervous system is engaged. So constriction of the bladder muscle is a parasympathetic response. So these questions, the Kahoot questions, this practice quiz, they really are quizzing you over content. So just that basic level of knowledge. Um, and test questions go a step further to applying that knowledge. And they're similar to like the chapter 19, the chapters 15 and 16 homework assignments that you did that had more of uh, uh, critical thinking test questions in those. But the first step is to know the content. If you don't know the content, you're going to be clueless when it comes to taking the exam. Once you know the content, you want to practice applying that knowledge by doing practice questions. So you can do the online questions that you can access with the online resources that go along with this book. For practice, I know students find websites where they have practice pharmacology test questions. Um, so that is what I would encourage you to do if you wanted to practice applying the knowledge once you got it done. If you did poorly on the cahoots, got about half of them right, I suggest that you redo those, right, and sort of use it as a flashcard to get that content down. All right, now we're going to talk about just some general information about the exam. I've had a couple students ask, what is the setup of the exam going to look like? Normally, your nursing exams will be 40 multiple choice questions, five select all that apply questions, and five math questions. Um, sometimes I might throw in some matching or things like that, but that's the general basis that you're going to see for your nursing examinations. Uh, and again, the questions are going to be more application, so not so much um, true and false and matching and things of that sort, but just testing that you understand the basic knowledge and content, you have that down, and then you're able to critically think through those questions. So an example would be um, sort of understanding the difference between selective and non-selective medications, right? That's just a basic knowledge understanding. Application would be uh, the question tells you you have a patient who has uh, a respiratory disorder, COPD. Which beta blocker are you going to give? And then there's a list of four beta blockers. And you have to recognize, one, my patient has a respiratory disorder. A selective uh, medication is going to be more beneficial to that patient. And then you then have to know which beta blockers are selective. Um, so again, the exam begins at 8. 
The room assignments are posted at the bottom of the week three plan and they'll also be posted on the room doors. You want to make sure that you get into the room and are seated by eight. Once the exam starts, no one would be allowed to enter late and start taking the exam. We'd have to arrange for you to take it within 24 hours and there would be a 5% deduction. Um, the morning of the exams, I'm not going to be able to answer any questions for you and it's going to be come in, sit down, take your exam. When you're done, um, you go, wanna, you're going to want to go ahead and exit the building, assuming you're not staying for any open labs or anything like that. Let's see what else. What to bring? Bring a calculator or two. Um, I suggest two calculators, two pencils with erasers. There's no need to lug all your textbooks and everything in with you. Um, if you want to bring it in because you're one of those crammers and you want to study that last five minutes while you're sitting before the exam, that's fine. But there's no reason to bring everything in with you if you don't want to. Um, so we talked about once you submit the exam, you're able to leave campus. And you guys already know because the lab, you have to come in through building B. I think everybody knows that, right? So you park in the building B parking lot and come in through B. You have to have a mask and you have to uh, get your temperature scanned. Obviously, if you came in and you had a fever and they sent you back out, um, you'd reach out to me and we'd work out something to get you And when you were, did not have a fever and were feeling well so that you could test. If you're feeling ill or something like that, you need to reach out to me as soon as possible prior to the exam to let me know that you're not going to be able to make it. And again, we'll make arrangements. I will not do any individual exam reviews, but I will talk about the weak areas of the class as a whole. And then students who fail the examination, if we have anyone fail, would be assigned remediation. And that will be assigned based on that student's uh, weak areas. I know some of you guys are probably feeling a little bit overwhelmed with your first pharmacology exam happening for some of you on the same day as your lab competencies. Uh, but as long as you've been staying on top of your material, staying on top of your lab skills and practicing those, you should be able to get through this without um, any issues. For students who wait until the last minute and try to cram right before the test, it's going to be difficult. But if you've been um, studying your pharmacology weekly, daily throughout the week, reviewing things, memorizing those classifications and what's going on with them and being able to associate the prototype medications with those classifications, um, you're going to be able to get through this. So if you have any questions while studying, send me the question by email and I'll respond. Again, if you're waiting until Sunday night at midnight to send me an email, I probably am not going to see it. Um, but if you do have questions, please email me and I will respond and get back to you so we can clarify any confusion you might have. All right. Good luck studying.